So lesson number one that I want to communicate to you here today is that uh, I am hugely passionate about making a definition um, intelligent. Okay, so the, what I mean by that is wherever possible, I try to reference geometry based off of other information that's already present in my model. So if I have a, a grid pattern, and I'm trying to assign circles to that grid pattern, right? And, and basically, I want it to all be dependent on the grid size, right? That's the key element right there. Um, I can basically, I mean, you already know by now, if I want to map circles to it, all I need to do is grab the curve, um, under the curve tab, under the primitive panel, we're going to grab uh, the circle here with the orange icon. And all we have to do are connect the points to the base point input of the circles, and there you have circles on the grid. Okay, so that's step one. However, um, the, the, the radius right now is the default value of one, and it doesn't matter at all really what radius I give it. The problem that I have with this particular definition is that the circles are not related to the grid in any other way besides being located wherever the, the point is of the grid. Okay, so in, not in all cases will you need to do this, but my goal here is to have all of my circles be um, within, uh, basically touch each other at a tangent. Okay, so the I, I, I essentially want the radius of the circle to be exactly half of the size of the grid cell. Does that make sense? So we're gonna be doing this kind of, you know, simple arithmetic quite frequently. Um, so in order to get the radius here to be half the size of the grid cell, I could literally type it in, and I'm gonna do that right now. I think I have it set to eight right now, so radius of four should do the trick. There we go. Right, it all looks peachy right now. The, the circles are exactly tangent, the pattern fits, it's all good. But what happens when I change the grid size? Right, if I change the grid size, they either overlap or they're too far spread apart. So the beauty of algorithmic design, this is where we start to get into developing an actual algorithm, um, is that we can we can uh, bind the arithmetic of all of these features basically back to one source uh, bit of information. So uh, if I remove that, what I need to do is take the number 10 and create a relationship there to radius. Obviously, if I use a grid size of 10 and I set my radius to 10, it's going to be uh, twice as large as I need it to be. So if I need it to be half of that, what I can do, the uh, very nifty tool that I have at my disposal is, and you would think that it would be under math, right? Operators, and there are all these cool mathematical tools and simple arithmetic tools where I could put in, you know, divide this by two. And in fact, I'll do that for you so you can see what it looks like. So I go to um, division, and I can divide 10, right, so it says, the item to divide, that's the dividend, and then the uh, divisor, right, the, the item to divide with, and so I'll just take a param, and I'll divide it by two. And the value I get is five. Make sense? Then I can plug that in, and it looks good, right? Well, Am I going too fast? Yes. Okay, sorry. We can we can go we, we can kind of you know cycle back on it, but I'm I'm like right at I'm like right at the precipice of just showing you what it actually does. Okay, so basically now that I've done this mathematical operator, I can just pull it to make it smaller or larger, and it will always be tied to the grid. Okay. So now that I've, I've you know, hit the punchline, I'll go back and kind of recap what happened. All right. 
So basically, all I did here was, was connect the grid size, right? So that's, that's the, the, the width and height of each of the cells. I connected it to the radius, and it was too big, right? It was twice as big as it needed to be. So in order to correct that and, and make it relative to half the, the grid size, I just put in this mathematical operator, and I divided that value by 2 and then plugged it in. Okay, so this one right here is under math operators. And this one you know is under curve prim. You guys need a second to catch up? All right. 